What's up, Infected, and welcome to The Quarantine. So we're going to be taking a look at a game by the name of Fog of Love. Now, Fog of Love may sound familiar because it had a successful Kickstarter not too long ago. Now, what you see here, this is going to be a pre-production copy of the game, but it should be really close to what the final product is going to be. But what is Fog of Love? Well, Fog of Love is essentially romantic comedy in a box. Now, mechanically, is a little bit harder to kind of nail down. The mechanics of the game is very fluid. You're going to be playing cards and hope that you and your partner match, but you're kind of role-playing your character. Or, you can game your character. Really, however you want to play this within the confines of the rules, is perfectly viable, but it doesn't really classify itself into any one genre, like I can't tell you that this is a, a set collecting game, for example. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's go over to the overview and find out. All right, this is basically Fog of Love set up and ready to go. Now, really what you're gonna do is you're going to decide which one of the scenarios you're gonna play. Uh, you're going to choose the synapsis card and make sure you follow any special instructions that are listed on the card. Then, you both are going to create your character. Now this game is neutral, uh, very gender neutral. I can be, f you can play a male-female, female-female, or both players can be male-male. Uh, the only difference is there are a few cards that specifically require a male and female in play. However, from what I've understood, I think there's only like 10 of them that I've found, if even that, out of all of these cards that you see here. So there's not a whole lot of them that are gender specific. Um, other than that, the game plays flawless, whether you are a gay couple, a straight couple, whatever you want to be. Uh, so with that out of the way, the way you're going to decide to play this game is you are going to draw five of these trait cards. You and your uh, partner are going to draw five fake cards. Now these are going to give you a little bit of extra points at the end of the game that you have to try to achieve. Now you can ignore these 100%, but you're going to have an easier time winning at the end of the game if you're able to achieve these. So you're going to choose three of them and you're going to put them in your little standee here so you're teammate cannot see what they are. So you, right now I'm pretentious, relaxed, and sensual. Now you want to try to refrain from uh, choosing the same. So if we had, I don't know, say another one of these blue ones that were down, we probably wouldn't want to choose that because the requirements double, which will make sense on the next card. You also don't want to choose two opposing, as you see here, because it's not going to be possible for you to choose both of them. Now, when you're looking at the arrows that you see here, this is always up because you do the, uh, the direction of all the text. This is up, this is down. So, you're, once you've gotten that out of the way, you're going to take the rest of these and you'll put them on the bottom of the trait deck. You'll then draw three of the occupation cards and you're going to review them. And now you will choose one of these three and this will be your occupation. So, do you want to be an internet celebrity? Do you want to be an architect? Or do you want to be a bookstore owner? And these are going to affect your traits as you see here. So if I were to choose an internet celebrity, you put it here, and then you're going to choose or take your color token here, and you're going to put it wherever this tells you to because, let's face it, your job does have a little bit of effect on how you, your personality. Then once you've chosen that, you're going to draw five of these feature cards. Now this is where you're going to help your partner create their character. You're going to go through here and what attracted you to their character. So uh, maybe I liked my character had long blonde hair, so you're going to put one there. Then your teammate is going to do the same thing for you for one. And then uh, I also noticed she was very tan, which this is literally becoming the opposite of what I would prefer, but either way. Uh, and then they would do the same thing with me. And then uh, they also had a luxurious watch. So, of course, they're going to put markers on, in this case, they would put an orange up, a black up, and a purple down, because those are the things they had. And then you would do the same thing here. Now you're ready to play. So then, once you've set up everything on the field, you're going to remove any destinies that you're not allowed to use according to your scenario. So, in the full game, 
there are seven destinies, but certain scenarios are only going to use so many of them. Now these are basically your end game objectives. You can win, your partner can win, or you can win together. Uh, or nobody can win. But the main goal of this game is the story and the journey that you guys are telling together. Then, once you've done that, you're going to draw your starting hand, again, based on your synapses. Once you both have your starting hand, so in this case, you're going to draw uh, three sweet, one drama, and one serious, according to the Sunday morning date that I chose for this demo. Then, you're going to flip over the chapter one card, and you're going to do what it says. So this would say, so where should we be, or where should we go? So when you look here, you're going to have the title of the card, some flavor text that you're generally going to want to read out loud to your opponent, and then these are your different choices that you're going to make. If you match, you're going to get whatever's down here. If there's no match, you're going to get whatever's down here. This has the length, how many cards are going to be played total. So in this case, you know, it's a two-player game. You each will be playing three cards in this uh, chapter. And then when you refill your hand up at the end of the turn, you're going to draw out of that deck. So in this case, your partner is going to choose one of these, and you're going to put it there. And you would choose one, and you put it here. Because, as you see here, it said both choose right here. Some of them say um, your partner chooses, some say you choose, so you're going to do what the card says. So then we're going to reveal. So I've, of course, because I, I put one down randomly, let's say I did C. So mine says, uh, we're going to pretend we're tourists, whereas my partner says they want to sing karaoke. So you're going to get any benefits if there are any that are below your choice, and then there's no match, so we both would go up to love 10, which is right here. So you start off at zero, and every time you go around and you hit 10, you leave a marker in the middle, and you would grab another marker and put it on zero. So now we see I have 10 love. Then you're gonna choose one of these cards in your hand that look very similar to the chapter one. So for example, uh, maybe I could make her pregnant or maybe there's Facebook drama and or close your eyes so for example I'll play this close your eyes boom so it says both chooses so this says a uh, player selects where to go the partner tries to guess where it is so I would say maybe put C again we're gonna go to the local square to listen to the street storyteller but maybe my partner thinks I'm going to hit uh, I don't know, I lost track of where we're going. So they're gonna flip it over, and I flip mine over. I chose C, so I'm going to put a token on yellow up, because that's what's there. My partner chose B, so they're going to put one on the black down. So this is a good way for me to kind of gauge what my partner is trying to go for with how they're answering, so we can try to get on the same page. Now once you've played your card, you're going to draw back up from whatever the chapter says. So we would draw back up from Sweet. So even if I played one of the serious card that I started with, or maybe the drama card I started with, I'm still always going to draw up from the Sweet. So then of course my opponent, or not my opponent, my teammate is going to play one, and then I'm going to play one, and we're going to go back and forth until there's a total of six cards in here. At which point, you're going to discard this, and then you will flip over the chapter two and you would just continue doing the same thing. So for example here, um, if you chose A on this, you cho uh, the chooser discards destiny, may not discard unconditional love. So let's touch on those destinies. Now this is how you're gonna win the game. So if at the end of the game, once you get past in this case, you get through chapter two, you get through chapter three and you're gonna flip over the finale and it's gonna tell you what to do. So if I manage to have four green down, which is, uh, what is it, rough, uh, antagonistic, and stubborn. So if I had four things on the green down arrow, and I have at least 15 m or more love than my partner, and my partner doesn't break up, I would win based on being dominant. However, maybe I wanted to break up. I was just toying her around the entire game, maybe I'm going to try shooting for the Heartbreaker. Now it's very important to know that you and your partner both have the exact same cards. So if my partner sees that I have, say, six points down here on uh, deceitful, pretentious, and self-centered, 
then maybe they know that, and my love is kinda low, maybe they know me, I'm gonna try to break up, so instead, what they're gonna try to do is go for the honorable exit. So that way, you fulfill this destiny if your partner is the heartbreaker. That way you can kind of react to it. But if they're not actually the heartbreaker and that just maybe had to do with some of their abilities down here or their uh, features down here, then I would still win if my love is 15 or more and for each of my trait goals, uh, I have a shared balance in the opposite direction. So lastly, let's touch on how your individual balances and shared balances work. So if we look, say, here, me and my partner have a shared balance of six because they have five and I have one. However, I have an individual balance of one. However, if we look here, my partner has an individual balance of one and a shared balance of zero because in either or, because we have two up here, and if we're doing individual, they only have one pink down here. So one or two minus one is one. However, if it's asked for this shared, they would have zero because they have two tokens, and then we have two tokens down here. So that's how you're gonna gauge all of this. And then at the end of the game, once you've hit the finale, it's gonna tell you how you're gonna score these. Certain ones maybe give you plus three love, maybe plus five or more, depending on the scenario. So you're gonna add up your love and add them all here once you hit that finale. And it's gonna tell you to choose a, uh, a destiny here. You're gonna choose a single destiny before you even do this. And then you're gonna see if you guys both win when you reveal, or maybe just you, or maybe just your partner won. And that is really how you play Fog of Love. I know that may have sounded a bit all over the place. Um, there's The game is very simple, and I do want to touch note on in this review, the game comes with a fantastic tutorial. Honestly, one of the best tutorials I've ever seen in a board game. You have three decks of cards, and the top card of the first deck is this. You're going to flip it over, read it, it is going to tell you exactly what to do. The next card is the number two card. You're going to take the number two card, uh, which is another stack of cards. You're gonna unwrap it, you're gonna take this, read it, do exactly what it says. You're gonna draw the top few cards that it tells you, and then you're gonna see, it's gonna tell you to yeah, pick up the and read the card called tutorial three, look for the number three. Then you're gonna find this, which was the next card under this, and so on and so forth. And this will teach you how to play without even cracking open this rule book a single time. All right, Fog of Love. Well, I have a special guest here today uh, on the final thoughts for this one. Now, Fog of Love, it was interesting. When I first kickstarted this game, I got it purely because a lot of the time it's really difficult to get her to want to play a game. She's not a, he, real big into board games, uh, but she does play them, you know, from time to time. I try. Yeah, especially, I do try. Yeah, she does. And but getting her to play it is like pulling teeth. But when she does play them, she does enjoy them. But I got this in hopes that it would be a game that she would be able to enjoy quite a bit. So overall, we definitely recommend Fog of Love. The game is phenomenal. Um, she enjoys it quite a bit. There's actually been no numerous times where she has asked me to play instead of me having to ask her to play, which is unheard of. Um, but what is your favorite part about, you know, what do you like so much about Fog of Love? It is extremely, very interactive. Um, you know, some of the cards that has you actually go into detail on what is one of your um, or your characters. memories. Or your character's favorite memories. But sometimes you can use that as a, hey, let's and dig deeper into this. It, it, it's <laughs> it's a game that you could play as you and your your significant other or you know whoever your spouse or whatever, or you can role play if you're into role playing like me. But like one of the things, if you're actually trying to do yourselves, because I actually caught myself doing that the first time that we played this, and I was getting all the traits wrong for the character that I was playing. And I was like, oh, um, yeah, I need to remember this is not me. <laughs> yeah, she was she was actually getting annoyed because she's like, none of these are me. 
I'm like, well, like, you're playing a character. Do this. But it, it's you have some very funny scenes. Pretty much every game we've played, there's been a lot of laughter, and it's been just hysterical sometimes, just some of the outcomes. But then when you're in sync with each other, which is kind of part another part of the game, because you, you're still playing with your significant other. And so you got to think, how are they going to think? How are they wanting to play their character? So you also have that part into the mix as well, which is really cool. And then this tutorial system, which I touched on, on the, in the review, in the overview, we didn't, the first time we played, I don't think we had to crack open the book a single time. I sat it back in the box. I don't think we did. Now, like, this is the best tutorial system I have ever seen in a board game, hands down. You know, most of the time I'm just sitting there playing with the pieces while he's going through the rule book yeah. and figuring out the rules, and on this one it was just... We're going straight in. Yeah, and like normally when I get, you know, any of these other games that I either, whether it's to review or whether it's just a game I bought and I just, I want, I, I sit there for an hour learn trying to learn the basics of the rules so I can explain it to people and whatnot. I didn't have to do that with this. I, we sat it down, opened it up, and started playing. And didn't have a, I think there was one point where we had a little bit of a question, but we didn't even need to open the book. The next card clear, clarified it, which was phenomenal. So overall, I, I mean, I, I can sit here and talk highly about this game all day. The game is fantastic. And then not to mention, you don't only have to play it with, you know, your significant other or anything like that. I played it with my brother. We had a blast. I played it with a friend of mine. We had a blast. We have some, we still joke about while we play other games about the events that happened in that game. So nothing says you have to play this just with your, your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend or anything like that. You can play with anybody and it's a fun game, and especially if you and the other person you're playing with loves role playing, because you can role play your characters. Which and, I'm bad at. Which, you know, she's got the imagination when it comes to role playing of a rock. So, um, and then there's a bunch of really cool design choices. So like these chips that you use to make your decisions, they're all weighted. They have a significant weight to them. They're they're actually heavier because we went to a casino not long ago, and I'm mm -hmm. wanting to say they're heavier than casino chips. And the designer said the reason for that is they wanted you to feel the weight of your decision, which is such a small, really cool decision. And it's just the game is riddled with things like that. Now, that's not to say the game's perfect. The game does have a few flaws. And did you have any flaws that you want to talk about? No, none that I can see. So, I do have a few flaws with the game, and none of them are huge, but the biggest one is this box. Now, oh. I don't know if this is going to be the final version of the box, but the box is this. So it slides out, which isn't bad, um, but when you want to open it, you have to give it a little jostle and then pull it out, as you see, like this. So to open it, you gotta give it a little jostle and slide it out, and that's kind of cool, but the problem is if you accidentally put this into your game shelf like that, when you go to pull it out, there's a good chance it's all gonna slide out. So I don't like this box at all. Uh, I would prefer to have your standard lift-up style box, but again, that's a minor little gripe. And then the last thing that, the last little gripe that I did have about the game are there a few of the, or actually a lot of the choices. Um, what they relate to on the board seems a little strange. So, for example, one of the cards is Promiscuous, which I'm wanting to say is the down, uh, the blue down, uh, sincerity, you know, unsincere. But there in uh, one of the cards, you are sleeping with the other person's uh, best friend. And it's a secret, which I didn't really cover secrets. They go off to the side of the board and they don't count as one of those cards played into the scene. Um, and at the end of the game, if they're not revealed, you reveal it and get bonuses. Or if they are revealed, you usually get penalties. Um, and But the, the tokens that you have to put on for sleeping with the friend wouldn't relate to what you think it would relate to. And I don't remember what it was right off the, uh, right off the bat. But that's, that's basically my biggest complaint with the game. With that said, 99% of the things in the game all make sense. You know, if you're withholding secrets, you're not going to be as sincere. Um, if you are 
if you always want to do you know this one thing you don't want to experiment you're you're going to be you know curiosity down um discipline if you're wild and crazy and like to drink a lot you're gonna you're gonna be disciplined down okay, so personally this would probably be well not probably is now in my top 10 list of games which i'm very very finicky on which games that i like to play just because you know, just the amount of interaction that you can get between the players the stories that you can yeah. tell and yeah, the stories and and she's a bit camera shy uh, uh, I get tongue-tied but I don't talk that much yeah so <laughs> our tastes in board games are like night and day um, but this is definitely one game we both can agree on there's very mm -hmm. few of those mine outside of like deck builders because you like like Tonto Cory and all yeah, but, uh, as I also yeah but for the most part our tastes differ like night and day but this is one that we both can totally agree on because the the stories that are told, even if you're just emulating yourself, just with a little bit of adjustment based on you know the cards you have down here, and you're just making the decisions that you personally would make with that person. And I'm just waiting for the day that we play this and you break up with me, and I'm gonna hold the biggest <laughs> crutch against you, and we're gonna have an all-out fight going on. I'm gonna sleep on the couch. <laughs> That's right, um, but. Yeah, overall, I, I highly, when this game hits the market, uh, especially if you have a significant other you want to play games with, I highly recommend picking this up. There's, outside of the few minor little gripes that I had, um, there's very little to say negatively about the game. The game is really fun. The game is outstanding. But yeah, overall, I definitely recommend this game, especially if you have a significant other or anything like that that you are wanting to play games with. Start them out on this. This, you're going to tell a really fun story, even if you're just emulating yourself into the game. And it's a lot of fun. And, and there's multiple different scenarios that are all varying different lengths. You only got an hour to play, play the, the Sunday morning date. There's so many cards here. Even if you're getting the same card, you're going to get them in different orders, which is going to change how you're playing here. But then you're also going to have different traits in front of you that's also going to affect how you play. And there's... There's just so much replayability in the game, but so I, I highly recommend it. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time in the quarantine.